Transformers number seven recalls the fate of Ultra Magnus on Cybertron while the Decepticons reckon with a leadership change and the Autobots prepare their next move. We're going to talk about the review right here. See you in three. Welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of Transformers number seven from Image Comics and Skybound. We're going to talk about what happened in the last issue, what happened in this issue, what we liked, what we didn't like, and wrap it up with a final review and score. But before we get started, please like, share, comment, subscribe, hit that bell for notification. Your attention is greatly appreciated. Let's talk about the credits. This issue is written by Daniel Warren Johnson, and then we have an art changeover. Daniel Warren Johnson is no longer the lead artist. Is, this issue is drawn by Jorge Corona, with colors by Mike Spicer, letters by Russ Wooten, and the main cover, cover A, is drawn by also Daniel Warren Johnson. Before we dig into the meat of the issue, let's talk about what happened in the last issue. So that was the wrap up of the first six issue arc. The Autobots faced off against Devastator and the Decepticons through strategy, overwhelming odds, and lots of great fighting and lots of great action. They managed to defeat Devastator and bring him down, which sent the, uh, the uh, Decepticons packing and the Autobots now are in charge of the arc. So it's a temporary truce. Uh, or at least a temporary uh, parting of the two forces, but otherwise uh, the Autobots so far have come out on top. Despite the fact that they lost uh, Sparky, who gave himself to repower the AllSpark, which is now residing in Optimus Prime, and they thought Optimus Prime was dead. So he's brought back to life, but with Sparky's life force um, making it possible. Now let's talk about what happens in issue number seven. We get a flashback or a flash sideways, if you will, to Cybertron, where we see a bunch of rebel Autobots fighting their way through the Decepticons to get to some leader that is unnamed. But at the very end of their battle, despite the fact that they take over overwhelming losses, they find out that they, uh, the Autobot that they were trying to recover, uh, which was Ultra Magnus, is in pretty rough shape and looks like he's been either completely killed or at least com or completely disassembled. Uh, cut back to Earth. We find out the military forces have been engaged to come and find the Autobots and the Decepticons. They don't know who's who or what's what, but uh, naval forces are on the way, battleships are on their way, and the full might of the military is on the, on the, uh, on the offensive. Uh, we cut then over to a gathering of the Decepticons, not that they've been displaced from the Ark and pretty much sent a packing, and some of the Decepticons have now realized that they need a leadership change. Starscream is not having any of it because he thinks it's just grumbling, but the one who steps up and really says, nope, it's time for a, a leadership change and there's nothing you can do about it unless you uh, prove yourself in hand-to-hand -hand combat is Soundwave. So now Starscream has to fight one-on-one -on -one against Soundwave and he gets beat pretty badly. He loses an eye, gets crunched up pretty bad. Most of his shoulders messed up and he's pretty much uh, down for the count. And now at the end of the battle, Soundwave despite also taking some damage, is now the new Decepticon leader in lieu of Megatron or anybody else. We cut the other direction and we catch up with the Autobots who are outside the Ark uh, and just, just trying to figure out what to do next. RC has some one-on-one -on -one time with Carly, who is still angry, still mad about the loss of her father. And she's training with a gun to kind of make sure that she is better prepared for the next battle whenever it crops up. RC reminds her, or at least warns her, that revenge is a, is a dish best served cold. And maybe she needs to rethink about what is her objective in learning to shoot and to kill. And because RC remembers when she was a young Autobot and she was helped by Ultra Magnus, who helped her to kind of... Uh, overcome the loss of her clan and how that in some of the destructive ways she learned by being trained up by Ultra Magnus almost consumed her as well. And so there's a lot of regret there about th how things could have been done differently. That RC tries to impart to Carly, but Carly's still raw from the loss of her father. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Optimus Prime is trying to console Spike over the loss of Sparky. Uh, and, th and that's something that Optimus tries to console him about, but it, he knows it's going to take time. As, as uh, Optimus Prime is jumping, uh, is driving away with uh, with some of his uh, colleagues, other Autobots, all of a sudden he's hit with a sort of a spasm or a seizure. And in that seizure or that spasm or that vision, he sees himself holding a small baby child, which seems to indicate that 
Sparky's memories are now within Optimus Prime, which is might be a side effect of what happened by Sparky uh, sacrificing himself to reignite the AllSpark. Cut forward a little bit to the arc, and we see that Ratchet and some of the other Autobots are trying to use whatever parts they can to revive more, uh, more revive more Autobots, but they're having some trouble. It's going to take longer. Uh, and, but Optimus Prime now realizes that they have a temporary uh, reprieve from their, te their fight with the Decepticons, but now he needs to do something to make sure that they stay vigilant and on the offensive. And we end on a mild cliffhanger where Optimus goes back into a room of the Ark where he sees more uh, Autobots and Decepticons and he needs something that's going to give him a bird's eye view, whatever that means. So... That's the way the issue ends, and with a little bit of a soft cliffhanger, but the promise of more cameos on the horizon. What do we like about this issue? Uh, lots of great action, especially with the Decepticon uh, power change, if you will, or leadership change. Uh, plenty of great heart moments between RC and Carly, and also between Optimus and Spike. And the the sort of the hint or the suggestion that we're going to see more related to Ultra Magnus is a pretty big deal. So there's a lot of good stuff hanging out in this issue. And uh, you know, the big question that everybody's going to be asking is what about the art? We'll talk about that in the, in the next session after this one. But generally speaking, this is a very positive issue. What didn't we like about this issue? Nothing at all. I mean, there's, there's a lot of good stuff that's happening. Daniel Warren Johnson's ideas for storytelling for the, the Transformers is on point, and you get a lot of developments on all fronts. So from, from start to finish, this was a fantastic issue and really nothing much more than a, a, an odd nitpick here and there, but nothing that detracts from the issue at all. So let's switch gears to talk about the art. Jorge Corona takes over for Daniel Warren Johnson. And is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, it's not the same style because obviously Daniel Warren Johnson has a very unique uh, blend of action and inks and pencils that work, that suits his storytelling capabilities. But uh, Jorge Corona, I gotta have to gotta admit it, it looks pretty good. It's it's definitely a different style. You notice the change, but it looks solid overall. So if you're concerned about Corona taking over and thinking that the the quality is going to drop significantly, it does not. Over, overall, looks visually it's very interesting and it's a solid issue over there. Final thoughts, what do we think about this issue? There's great action, lots of great story development, great heart, great plotting, pacing, all the aspects that you're looking for are there. The quality hasn't dropped a beat uh, with starting with the new arc, even though you're moving over to a different artist, visually speaking, it still looks like a fantastic issue and fits with right, right within the realm of the, the story, the way Daniel Warren Johnson originally envisioned it. So overall, from start to finish, this was a fantastic issue. Therefore, we're going to give Transformers number seven from Image Comics and Skybound a nine out of ten. A well-deserved score for a well-deserved issue. This was a lot of fun to read, lots of excitement, lots of adventure, and it's absolutely worth it for you to continue to pick up this title. Uh, let us know what you think about this series from Skybound and Image. Are you reading it or are you not reading it? Are you a Transformers fan or not? We want to hear your thoughts down in the comment section. Otherwise, please stay tuned for the outro for the next review.